Welcome to a special edition of Modern Wall Street from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, New York. It is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Today, the NCSA and NASDAQ Cybersecurity Summit has been taking place at the crossroads of the world. So what better time than the present to talk about security and IoT? I'm joined by Sean Cooley, who's the VP and CTO of IoT at Cisco. Sean, great to have you here today. Great, thanks for having me. Well, when most people think about the Internet of Things, they might think about smart devices, smart gadgets, as well as smart cities. But for for businesses out there, they have to be aware of the risks. So what should they do in terms of implementing security? So companies really need to think about the, the potential misuses of the devices that they're putting into their business. Uh, and they really need to look at their vendors and make sure the vendors are following a secure development lifecycle uh, and are properly uh, building and deploying and updating the devices that they're putting into their businesses. And so th this means constant awareness of, of what's in your network. Uh, and how those devices can be attacked and abused. Uh, and so we, you know, we, I, I like to say that if you're not the first person to run the simple scripts and tools, things like Metasploit, on your own networks against your own devices, uh, then somebody else is going to, and they're going to find those easy vulnerabilities that should have been fixed by simple software patches. Mm -hmm. And when we think about the Internet of Things, most consumers might think about smart gadgets and devices inside their household. But for enterprises, what do they need to be concerned about when it comes to risk? So enterprises are, it depends on the, the industry obviously, uh, but for most enterprises they're typically concerned with building management systems. So things like uh, air conditioning, heating, uh, lighting systems, security systems, uh, cameras, things like that that are inside of uh, the typical office building. Um, you know, we, we've seen attacks in the past where uh, attackers came in through remote access into those systems uh, and then used that to get access to other parts of the network. Uh, and so one of the things that, that we push a lot is something called segmentation or micro-segmentation, uh, where your network is, is sort of virtually broken up into different segments so that those segments can't communicate with each other. And it means that if somebody is able to take advantage of one part of your building management systems or some part of IoT that you have in your business, they're not able to leverage that into getting into more of your business. And Sean, when it comes to the Internet of Things, there are some staggering statistics out there. By 2020, 20.4 20 billion devices are expected to be connected to the network. So given that uh, statistic, what other trends do you expect to see in the near future? Yeah, so you know the, the 20 to 25 billion by 2020 is, is, uh, is obviously a staggering statistic. I think if you go out to 2025, the estimates are between 74 and a half and 100 billion devices connected, right? So that, that uh, growth really continues to explode uh, for quite a while. Uh, and so you know, we, we see this as an as a IT tax on business, which is you know, we tell a great story about how IoT is going to make everything more efficient, but we leave out the additional requirements of managing and securing and deploying those devices. Uh, and so for us, what we're doing is we're, we're working with the rest of the industry to come up with easy ways for devices to join networks and for the network to automatically secure those devices so that we can remove a majority of the burden that's placed on IT teams as they try to deploy these devices. And Sean, last but not least, before I let you go, I do want to talk about the upcoming holiday shopping season. Sure. Believe it or not, there are only seven day days left until Christmas, so a lot of consumers will be out there shopping on their smart devices as well as in malls. So when it comes to security as well as privacy risks, what do you think consumers should be doing? Yeah, so thanks for the reminder, first off. I, I need to get started on that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, obviously within your home, the, the easiest thing to do is make sure that your, your wireless access point is always up to date, right? So your, your Wi-Fi router, the, the thing that sits between the internet connectivity that comes into your home and the rest of your home, make sure it has the latest software on it. Uh, you know, updates come out for those pretty frequently. Make sure it doesn't have the default password on it. That you have secure credentials for logging into it. I would say beyond that, you know, obviously pay attention to the Wi-Fi access points that you connect to as you're out and about in the world uh, and, and make sure that they're actually what you're expecting to access. Uh, when you're on a public Wi-Fi access point, either use a VPN solution uh, or make sure that the sites that you visit have that green lock in the top corner, that they're actually secure sites. Uh, and then the last part I would say is, you know, for passwords, 
banking, uh, you know, any sort of shopping, uh, if they offer second factor authentication, uh, which is a text message to your phone or an app like Google Authenticator, make sure that you enable that feature and take advantage of that so that somebody who manages to get your username and password through some other means doesn't have access to the second factor and can't get access to the accounts that you have online. Well, some very important tips there for every day as well as for the holiday season. So thank you so much for joining me here, here at the NASDAQ today and thanks for your insight. Thank you for having me. We have a tremendous business opportunity with this technology. Oh.